Uh, we'll minimize that to avoid any distractions. Okay, so I've got my single user Twitter up and running. You remember this is what it looked like. We had a single view that displayed to us not only all of the tweets that existed, but a little form giving us the ability to add new tweets to our database table. Uh, today is a new day, and I can um, click Create. Appears down below. Uh, it might be nice to give the user some kind of success message, maybe up at the top. You know, your tweet was added, some kind of nice little message. Uh, it might also be nice to um, give the user a specific error message when that happens, when, when they've displayed a tweet that doesn't actually exist. And so we'll do a, a little bit of styling first on the error, and then we'll look at something called the flash hash, which will give us the ability to stash away uh, error or success messages uh, and display them to the user. And if we have some time, we'll go and we'll add some, um, some extra styling to the project in and of itself to make it look pretty. So here's what happens. If we're, if, if we're at the index page, you can see we have a form with a create button to the, to the right of that input within the form. If I make an error, uh, the button appears down below. What's happening behind the, the scenes here is that Rails is trying to be helpful in that the field that caused a validation error ends up getting wrapped in an extra div. So if we were to look at uh, the form that you just reach when you go to or do a get request to the index, it would just have the input inside of it. When you've triggered an error, that input ends up being wrapped in a div that has a class of field with errors, giving us the ability to apply extra styling to any fields that potentially caused an error for our form. Our form only has one input, but if the form had many, you could then highlight which of the, uh, the inputs were in error or which of the inputs had caused a validation error. And so we'll apply some styling to this div and potentially to the content of the div, which is the input, to, um, to do two things. One, to solve the problem of the fact that the tweet button uh, ends up below the form when we're in error. So that's sort of an inconsistency. And also we'll try to sort of put a, a red border around the form like a scaffolded view might have. And so that means I have to go into my, I'll just grab that. Here's my tweets controller. Here's my tweets view. This is where that actual text field is being generated. I don't have to change the view at all, right? Because the view is being generated by this form for, and it's automatically getting that wrapping div. So I can actually leave the view alone. I need to go to where my styling happens, which is in the app assets style sheets folder. And for every controller that we have in our system, you will find an associated css.scss file. And so I'll open up the one that has to do with tweets. We can put in plain old CSS here, but we can also put in SAS here. Uh, and SAS has extra capabilities like the ability to nest uh, your CSS uh, finders and whatnot. But we'll probably just be using it in the context of plain old CSS for now. They do work together. So you can have sort of intermixed in this file both uh, regular CSS and SCSS, and they just they work hand in hand. So if on the project you don't want to do any SAS, there's nothing wrong with filling this with just plain old CSS. And then if it comes time that you want to add some SAS, well, that's fine. So the, um, the field in question is this one here, div class field with errors. So I can go in here and I can sort of say, well, within a form, if we have a div with a class of uh, field with errors, to start with, maybe I don't want it to, uh, divs by default are breaking elements in that they insert a new line at the end of themselves. That's why when we wrap our input in a div, it pushes the create button to the next line because it's fault. Uh, an input all on its own isn't a breaking element. So the two things stack side by side. With a breaking element, they don't. So we can solve that problem by forcing this div to display inline. 
that should solve one of our problems. And so if I go back to my form here, and again, I create a tweet. What? What have you done to me? Here's my input. Here's my class. Display block. Have you not picked up my CSS? Form div field with errors. Does anyone see my error? Because I don't. Is it linked properly? Like, it... like did the CSS get picked up? Yeah. Let's see. So like a body. this would show me at least if that file has something in it. And it does. If we reload this and try this again, maybe, yes. So web browsers are notorious for caching files because they don't want to make full trips to the internet, right? They, if they have a file that they think is fairly recent, they're going to use their local copy of that file. And so what I did to sort of force it to release its cache is I went and looked at that file itself and sometimes you even need to sort of do a hard refresh on the file, like the control R kind of hard refresh. And so now when I'm sort of in an error state, that button's not getting pushed to the next line. If I go and inspect the element in question here, you can see now that display block has been replaced with this display inline. And if I take that off, it'll do the, the old functionality, right? And so I might also want a simple border around the element. And sometimes I play with these kind of things just inline inside of Chrome. So I might say, well, what does it look like if I was to give this thing a border, one pixel, solid, uh, red? Well, not so good, right? Maybe I need um, some padding around it or some margin. It's padding that'll do the trick here. So maybe I'll take that down to four, three, to four. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't look beautiful, but you get the idea that I can apply styling in this case, and I've sort of highlighted which uh, of my elements is in error. And so by playing with it in Chrome, I know that this is sort of what I want to exist inside of my CSS file, so I can now apply that in my CSS file. I can say uh, add a padding of four pixels and a border of one pixel solid red. Now, when I have an error, that should happen. So if I go to just the index all on its own, it should look normal. And if I create a tweet that's less than one character or greater than 140, I get this little outline. So I've simulated some of what the scaffolding uh, CSS does for us. It might also be nice, though, to have uh, an error message displayed and maybe even a success message displayed uh, for the reverse case of having sort of a a post that actually, or a tweet that actually was uh, inserted into our database properly. We'll do the success case first. And so if we remember in our create action, when the user submits a form, they go to the create action or their data goes to the create action. And if the tweet gets saved, we redirect to the index action. So if I wanted to have like a success message, if I did this, uh, your tweet was successfully posted. If I did that, on redirect, this variable would go out of scope because I've actually asked the browser to do a whole full uh, reload of a separate page and the web is stateless, so I lose my scope. So that's not going to fly. For this exact purpose, Rails gives us something uh, that allows us to uh, persist little bits of information App, sort of for one redirect. You want to keep something around for one redirect, you can stash it in what's called the flash hash. So I can say flash at position success. And now inside of the index view, if that flash at position success happens to exist, I can display it. And so I might do something like uh, in my... And, I could put this code that I'm about to add to the index.html. If I'm going to be using 
this flash success and error throughout my application, I might want to put it in the application layout, the, the sort of the template that all views end up inside of. But just to keep things simple, I'm going to put it just in my particular one view here. So at the top of this view, I might have some code that says, you know, if there is a flash message at position success, So if that exists, and I don't want that to be an echo, sorry. And then I will end this. Well, then display it. So I could have a paragraph of a class of success. And inside of it, I could echo in the flash at position success. So this is relying on the fact that uh, things that are nil evaluate to false. So if we go and do a lookup of flash a position success and find nothing there, it will return nil. And then this if statement will evaluate to false and I will not proceed to try to you know, display this paragraph tag. If there is something at position success, you know anything that isn't nil or false in Ruby evaluates to true. So as long as there's something there, this will evaluate to true. And then I will go and display this paragraph tag with my success message in it. So giving me the ability to persist a little bit of data across one redirect. And so if I split my view for a moment here, go to the controller. Here's where I'm stashing that data. And then here's where I'm displaying the data. And so if I happen to be just loading up the index all on its own, well, then this just won't display. So we can go and try to see this in action. And so all on its own, just going to the index action. If I was to view source, there's no paragraph in there. And um, will I see a success message, question mark? And there it is. Your tweet was successfully posted. Probably could use some styling at this point to have it stand out against the, the backdrop of the rest of the text. Uh, but you can see that we can use this flash hash to stash some data, display it later on. We could also use it for error messages. And so if our tweet is an error, we have... Um, you know, some kind of validation error. There's two things to do. One, we could go to the form four, just like scaffolding does, and we could put in some code that looks at the, uh, the errors that are actually listed inside of the object itself, and we could display those. Uh, but we could also just sort of create our own little flash message and display that as well. So we might have some code here that looks very similar to the success message, but something along the lines of error with a class of error displaying the flash hash at position error. And so you can see why I might want this at the top of my application layout. That way any uh, controller action within my entire application, if my application started to grow and grow, any controller action could stash something into either success or error within the flash hash and have it display in the same consistent way at the top of the page. The only thing that's different here is the fact that here I'm using the flash hash and it's going to persist over a redirect because I'm leaving the context. Here I'm not actually leaving the create action, I'm just rendering the index action. And so there's a special thing that we have to do. And so if we look up, you can get information about this flash hash inside of the uh, controller overview on Rails guides. And so by default, adding values to the flash will make it available on the next request. But sometimes you may want to access those values within the same request. So we just use what's called flash.now. And so that makes it immediately available. I don't have to do a request in order to get access to this thing. And then here I could say, sorry, all tweets must be from 1 to 140 characters in length.
flash dot now when I'm rendering and regular flash when I'm redirecting. Displayed in the same way. If the flash at success or the flash at error exists, we'll then display that particular message. So we can now go see uh, how this works here. I might uh, again try a successful message. Uh, Twitter tweeting. So the successful one still works. I try to create an empty tweet. And it tells me, sorry, all tweets must be from 1 to 100 characters. And I get this sort of ugly red border around my, my input. So that's um, that, that's effectively the flash hash. It's uh, sort of a precursor to our work that we'll look at on session. It's giving us the ability to have HTTP uh, or sort of addressing a deficiency with HTTP, which is the fact that HTTP is stateless. Now, most people will say that's actually a strength of HTTP because state is a big cause of errors in most programs, but it also makes programming web apps difficult. So we have things like session or the flash hash to give us the ability to add or enhance our application with a little bit of state. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? You can use it you know, from now on throughout your Rails applications anytime you have a little message. I almost only use it for success and error messages. That said, we might want to add a little bit more styling to our application. And so I've written the same Twitter application in PHP, so I'm going to grab some of that styling and drop it in. And we can see sort of how little is required to make this application look like sort of a, a nice full featured app. So this is what our, um, our view looks like right now. I'm going to grab some things from the, uh, the PHP application I've written, and I'm going to put some of them into the overall template. Even though I only have one view, it, it might be nice to have some of this stuff in the overall template of the view, which is in the layouts. So here's the application layout. The first thing I might do, uh, let's see. In my PHP version, I put a ID on the body and I have a div with an ID of wrapper that sort of wraps everything. So I might replicate that functionality here. And I'll close this div up. The yield is of course where the individual views get yielded into my view. You can see I'm using, in this case, um, an error message that has a class of error on it. So that'll still work in the context of my, um, my application. And so I can even move these success and error messages from the individual view into the layout file here. and Just properly indent them. At this point, I'll look and see what I have here. I have a form. It's got some placeholder text, and it's got a submit button. We'll work on that in a little bit. My tweets here are being displayed in a unordered list with an ID of tweets. So I can alter my code here. I had a UL, or I had a div. I can turn this into a UL. And I can tr create each tweet as an li within there, because that's really what they are. They're a list of tweets. I have this extra little um, bit of PHP code in here that you know, if no tweets were in my database, I display a little message saying uh, no tweets were found. Uh, I can do that as well in the context of this. If no tweets were found, 
in my application, I'd be creating invalid HTML because I'd have a UL with no, any, with no LIs inside of it. So I might have some code that says something along the lines like if at tweets uh, dot size zero, you know, what to do if there's, there's no tweets, and then you know, else, and then end here. properly indent this and so in my PHP I just had simply a little paragraph tag that displayed if there were no tweets get rid of that h1 now I haven't yet added the styling but I'll go back to my uh, application just to see if everything is still working sort of layout wise and my flash hashes are still working so there's my list of tweets you can see before I had validation uh, sort of an empty tweet snuck in there um, if I wanted to get rid of that I could go into my backend console and remove that if I create a valid tweet it should still display a success message and if I create an invalid tweet it should display still my a failure message. Now I'm going to grab some of the styling that I had applied to my PHP project and I'm going to apply it within here. It's just regular old um, CSS. There's no SAS happening at this point. I'm also not being super flexible here. So if my code, if I really wanted my code to be sort of cross browser supported, I probably wouldn't be using just the WebKit prefix for gradients. Um, I think gradients might even be supported across the board now in an unprefixed way. Uh, but right now my, my code will only work in WebKit, WebKit based browsers. And we'll, uh, we'll leave it. Probably eventually. I think they forked it or something of themselves. Yeah, so eventually that might not even work. Looks a little bit better. Um, this create a tweet, I might want to change the text here so that uh, it doesn't, I have sort of a fixed size on my button. And so I can go into my view here. Right now I just have a submit. Uh, if I add an extra parameter to that, saying maybe like tweet, That'll be my button text. Oops. Whoa. Oh, I put it, <laughs> put an extra little comma there. There's my tweet button. Uh, my input hasn't yet been styled, and so I would like to sort of replicate the styling. Uh, there. If we look at the input itself, you can see that we have uh, an input with an ID of tweet status. So that's sort of a target that I can use to style that particular ID. And so I might go ahead and do that. In my CSS right now, the input that I'm styling, there's a bunch of styles for the submit button alone. Where's the input in and of itself? That's a type submit, 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 submit. Oh, here's a plain old. So I said it has tweet status as its ID. <coughs> OK, a bit better. I'd probably just need to decrease the size or the width, maybe. Uh, thanks, Brett. Uh, and there you go. It looks a bit more uh, sort of styled. I've got rounded corners, which always make things beautiful. Uh, if I accidentally you know, try to submit an invalid tweet, I should see uh, sort of a styled error message. I could probably get rid of my sort of my ugly border that I had in there earlier on. So I could sort of comment this out for now or, or just plain old delete it. So again, if I do this, 
Oh, it still drops it down. Oh, thank you. So I still need to do that. Yes. OK, success message isn't uh, super pretty as of right now. So if I do uh, uh, another valid tweet, it just looks like this. But I could make uh, a similar sort of set of CSS for my success message. Right now I've got this error one where I define a color which is you know red and a background which is also reddish and I, I do this kind of thing. I could sort of replicate this for success and right now it'll be of course red which we don't necessarily want. But you can see I can apply those kind of stylings. And then I might want to go in and um, say target this and play around with the, the colors that are that are given to me here. So the success message might be better off having uh, looks like this color for green. So that's this. Bring that in here. That's the text color. And the background color, well, I might want that to be sort of that. That's all right for a nice little style. Drop that in here. There you go. So now I have uh, a properly styled uh, success message in green, an error message in red, and um, it looks a lot nicer than it did before. The gradient sort of breaks down when you go off the screen. I haven't fixed that error yet. Um, and I think that's as much sort of styling work uh, that I'll do for this project. Any um, other questions or comments about this in and of itself? The last thing I'll do is I actually will hop into the console and I'll show you how to remove this one um, tweet that has sort of an empty body to it or an empty status. If I was at the console here, I can load it up. I can do a tweet.all to see all the tweets that are in my system. It's the one that's between today is a new day and the tweet that will work. But I could also do something like trying to find it by way of a where clause. So maybe I assume that it's probably likely that the status is nil, or maybe it's blank. We'll see in a moment. So maybe it's a blank string. Is it neither? Today is a new day, and then directly after that, we see. Or before that. Oh, it's oh, interesting. So uh, if you remember last class, I tried to enter a tweet that had a bunch of blank spaces in it. And so there it is. Um, so it's, it's sort of a certain number of blank spaces. Uh, I thought so too. One, two, three, four, five. I thought that it was sort of uh, caught by the validation. So there it is. So tweet.destroy should get rid of that one. And I'll just go back to here. I've got rid of it. And I can even go and do like a tweet.destroy all to test out that sort of special case where my view, if there are no tweets, I get a simple little message saying there are no tweets available. And so if I destroy all, I go back to my single user Twitter. There are no tweets available. So that's sort of the end of this presentation, and I will stop the uh, screencasting software here.